I'd like to demonstrate for you uh, Journal of Chemical Education's Classroom Activity number 92, testing for iodide in table salt. Uh, this uh, experiment was published by Stephen Wright back in 2007 in the Journal of Chemical Education. This is a really neat reaction. It uses uh, it makes use of the reaction between iodide ion and peroxides, uh, hydrogen peroxide, to form water and iodine. So do this. Get two beakers. And we're going to fill each of these beakers with about a cup of water. That's around 250 mils. Then to each beaker, I'm going to add about four tablespoons of each type of salt. Now your regular table salt contains primarily almost 100% sodium chloride. So in goes the regular salt, mostly sodium chloride, some other fillers and stuff that when I stir won't dissolve. That's not a problem. The sodium chloride will, most of it. And then to the other beaker, we're going to add iodized salt, which contains, again, mostly sodium chloride. But there's also added 0.006% potassium iodide. What is that, 60 parts per million, if my math is correct? Not much. All right. Now, once you've got that ready, we're going to acidify the solution because the reaction uh, goes uh, much more quickly in acid. And to acidify the solution, we're going to add vinegar. I'm going to add about a tablespoon, a little less than a tablespoon. I'm going to add 20 mils. What a. Actually, that's a little more, isn't it? I think a tablespoon is 15 mils. Somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'm going to add 20 mils of vinegar to each flask, excuse me, each beaker. All right, to acidify the solution. And now we're going to need to add a little bit of starch. The reason why we need to add starch is because when the iodide reacts with the peroxide, it's going to form iodine. Now, iodine will react with starch to form a blue-black, purplish complex. I'm just going to add a dollop of this liquid laundry starch. Sometimes it's a little difficult to find. And I imagine, just a dollop each, I imagine you could use just cornstarch, a couple pinches of cornstarch as your source of starch. i got to warn you, though, I haven't, I haven't tried that out. I don't know if that works. All right, so we've added the starch. That's going to help us detect any iodine, any I2 that's formed in the reaction. Now we're going to add the other, well, the reactant, actually, that would uh, test for the presence of the iodide. That's hydrogen peroxide. And I'm going to add, again, about 20 mils each, around a tablespoon, give or take. All right, there's 20 mils of hydrogen peroxide, 20 mils of hydrogen peroxide. And the hydrogen peroxide, once again, should react with any iodide that's going to be present, any iodide ion that's present in either of these two salts uh, to form iodine. And the iodine that's formed should react with the starch to form blue-black complex. And the reaction takes a little bit to develop, a little time to develop. But I'm going to go ahead and place this white background behind both beakers so we can see any color changes that are occurring a little bit better. And I can already see a bit of a color, a darkening in the color of the beaker uh, that contains the iodized salt. So the iodide ion that is present 
in very small amounts in the iodized salt is reacting with the hydrogen peroxide in the presence of acid to form water and iodine, I2. The I2 that's formed is reacting with the starch that we added to form a blue-black complex, which right now looks, it looks kind of like bluish-orange to my eye. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. On the other hand, if we look at the salt that does not contain iodide, the potassium iodide, we don't see any color change at all, and that, that should be obvious. It's just nice to have the control there. And you can see as the reaction proceeds, the color darkens. And I'll continue to darken uh, to, well, I did it in class, and it, it darkened all the way to like a, a bluish color. Something I like to do with my students with this reaction is to tell them that it's usually not a good idea to pour iodine, I2, down the drain. And so how am I going to dispose of this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to add some vitamin C to this beaker. Vitamin C is also known as ascorbic acid. A lot of students know that vitamin C is an antioxidant. So you give them a little chemistry behind why we call that an antioxidant. When iodide ion, I minus, uh, reacts to form iodine, that's an oxidation reaction. Two electrons are lost from two iodide ions to form iodine, I2. We want to reverse that oxidation reaction, we can add an antioxidant like ascorbic acid or vitamin C. What I'm going to do is just take a tablet of vitamin C. I'm going to crunch it up with a mortar and pestle. You can just use a spoon to crunch it up if you don't have a mortar and pestle. Just going to pound it here and crunch it up nice and fine. I got my vitamin C, my ascorbic acid, my antioxidant. And I'm going to add this to the beaker that contains the, um, uh, the iodine that's forming. It's now looking to my eye, it's almost looking purple here. So I'll add this. This should reverse the oxidation reaction of iodide I minus to iodine I2. And goes the ascorbic acid, the vitamin C, the antioxidant, and we reverse. Our oxidation reaction. You can see that blue black color has faded to a, it looks like an amber or a brown to me. Well, I hope you enjoy it. This is a demonstration of Journal of Chemical Education's classroom activity number 92. Happy experimenting.